So my plan for this video is to give you the basic understanding of the tool Sculpt Plus all while creating something on the way. When you open Sculpt Plus, you see a sphere and a bunch of buttons. You can navigate around the view by sliding on an empty space, for example here or here. But if you slide over this object, you will be sculpting, like this. Now, you want to make sure you press on an empty space to sculpt, to slide, to navigate around the view. You can use your two fingers to zoom in and out and rotate the view, like so. The sculpt Plus app can do three things, three primary things, sculpt, transform and paint. We'll cover all of these. You can navigate around all of them from here. Sculpt, Paint and Transform. Choosing the Sculpt. Now if you want to add multiple objects or work on them, you have to go over here, the Objects tab. As you can see we already have a default sphere. You can hide it and do various operations like delete, duplicate, rename etc. You can add another by clicking the plus button. You can, you can choose from primitives or base meshes. For example, I'll choose a plane. For, for the sake of simplicity, make sure these two are turned off. And I'll create. As you can see, a plane was created. As the plane is created as a main object, we'll only be able to sculpt on the plane, not on the sphere anymore. That's because the plane is selected. If we want to, select, if we want to sculpt the sphere again, we have to go again and select the sphere. Now we'll, able, now we'll be able to sculpt. Like so. I'll delete the objects from now for now. And create a base mesh in head. By default, in the sculpt mode, the standard brush is selected, which you can see right here. Among the all of the brushes, the standard is selected. What the standard brush does is it sort of adds more clay. As you can see over here, it has added more clay to our object. You can add or remove clay and yeah you can undo from this arrow or redo from this one you have a limited number of undos precisely the number of bars you can see over here so you can undo so undo this many times with the standard brush you can also remove clay add or remove clay to remove clay you have to select the minus option over here toggling it the plus and minus option if there is plus plus the clay will be added if there is minus the clay will be removed these options are very handy i'll undo that operation now along with the standard brush another brush which is very important is the move brush as it suggests it moves the piece of geometry most of the sculpting you will be using the standard brush and the move brush If you think some areas of your model are rough, you can smooth them by turning the smooth option over here. When the smooth option is on, it will smooth no matter whichever brush you are in. Now to sculpt again, you have to repress the smooth option. Now you can sculpt again. With the move brush selected, let's give him some ears. Something like that. And some eyes too. For eyes, I'll choose the standard brush with negative selected and create some eye sockets. If you want to change the radius of the brush, you can do so with this dial over here. Increase or decrease. And below that, you can also change the strength. Okay, now we have a problem. A plane is selected, but we don't have any plane. There are sometimes glitches over here, so you have to select the head again. Now you can see the head is selected. I'll smooth the eyes a bit. Eye sockets to be precise. And while we are the standard brush, I'll create some ear spaces too. Now as you can see, now as you can see we are getting some jagged edges. That's because we don't have enough geometry or resolution, so as to speak. You can see how much resolution you have from the objects tab right here, the second one. You can see we have two five six two vertices and five one two zero triangles. What this means is that the mesh we have contains this many triangles to reconstruct this geometry. To convey what I mean, I'll go to the camera option 
and choose the display mode from smooth to wireframe. You can see these are the triangles. And as you can see over here, the triangles are not enough. Therefore, we are getting some jagged edges. To fix that, we have two options. Two options basically to increase the geometry, increase the resolution of the geometry. You can either subdivide. You can see the number of triangles have increased from 5120 to 20480. You can subdivide further or under the option. It's another way of increasing the resolution of your object that is by remeshing under the same object panel you can see over here for remesh you have to choose an average edge length let's say I'll select 0 0.1 and remesh give it some time there you go you can see even the remesh has re increased the resolution quite a bit you can see we have 66012 polygons and that's far too many I'll undo that operation. The difference between subdivide and remesh is that remesh basically evenly distributes the polygons. For example, if I choose the move brush and stretch it too much and then subdivide it, you can see that over here the polygon mesh is very dense but over here it's still stretched. But if you do the remesh option, I'll undo that again and choose remesh, this time an average length of say 0.15 and remesh you can see it's evenly distributed over the whole mesh I'll switch the view back to smooth from the camera option now I can smooth this part with ease I'll select the standard brush again with the negative selected do some little more sculpting over here. You choose the move brush and ever so slightly increase the radius. Now, by default, the symmetry is turned on, which means whatever action I do over one side of it, it will be replicated on the other side. As you can see, that's cool. If you don't want this to happen, you can turn it off over here from the brush settings. This is the brush setting, this is the object setting. From the brush setting, you can choose symmetry and choose an axis. Currently, the x-axis is selected. If you choose y-axis, the brush stroke will be replicated on the y-axis. See. If you don't want symmetry, you can choose none. And now, only one side of it will be affected. Hmm, affect the other side too. According to your needs. Hmm. Let's explore other brushes. The inflate brush inflates a certain area. I'll choose the positive and you can see that it inflated it I'll undo that operation you can rotate that's cool undo that trim flatten which flattens it all and crease crease is useful to create creases as it suggests I'll turn the symmetry back on. Now, let's work with multiple objects and create some eyes. I'll go to the objects panel and add a primitive sphere. Now you can see the sphere was added. Now I want to transform the sphere, that is to move over to the eye socket and to scale it down. I can do so by switching to the transform mode. From here, to the transform, you can see three, three buttons appear. One is the move, one is the scale, and one is to rotate. Choose the move and move it over here. Somewhere around here and here. Then I'll choose the scale. Now, if I choose any one axis and scale it, it will scale only at that axis. And if I want to scale it uniformly, I'll choose the yellow cube in the center and drag up or down. That will be fine. And move it in its place. something like that I'll go back to sculpt mode and sculpt it a bit more I'll choose the trim and trim it 
Perfect. Some actually turned off. That looks fine. I turn symmetry back on. Now, create the other eye. You can duplicate the object over here and transform it to this side. But there's a better way, and it is called mirroring. I'll delete that object. Select a sphere. Go back to sculpt mode. And in the objects panel, you can see an option called mirror on axis. This mirrors the whole object onto another axis. For example, if I select the x-axis. Oh. Sorry, the head was selected. So now the head, head has been mirrored to another axis. You can see. I'll undo that. Undo that again. Ah. I have to delete this. Go to sculpt mode with the sphere selected. Come on. The sphere isn't being selected. Weird glitches. I think I'll save the file in the tutorial. Okay. I'll try to rerun the app. Open the project. Tutorial. Now, if I select the sphere, the sphere gets selected. I'll go back over the object setting. Mirror an axis X. There you go. As you can see, that has been mirrored. And if I do an operation over here, it will reflect on the other side too, because they are only one mesh. I'll undo that. Okay. Now it's time to give some materials. To give materials, you can go over here to the mat cap section and choose any of the materials you can see the material has been changed I'll select the head and give it the material too probably this one okay, okay on to some painting I'll go to the paint mode with the eye sphere selected choose a color if you paint over here you can see it has been painted gray color to change the color you can go over here change it I'll undo that operation with the black color selected, then I'll paint. The symmetry is turned on right now, so if I paint on one side, it will be painted on the other side too of that object. To get rid of that, I will turn off symmetry. Now it won't get reflected on the other side. Paint a bit. Let's see, both the side has been painted because the mirror is turned on for this object. Choose a white color. It's a specular. Go. Looks fine. Go to the minus option. I can remove some color. You can see there are some jagged edges in the painting too. That's because even painting relies on the resolution. So to increase the resolution, I'll subdivide it. Close the add. Now paint it again with the black color. You can see the resolution has improved quite a bit. Just the white color. Do a bit more painting. Oh, the negative selected. Let's go. Now to paint the head, I'll go to the head. I'll select the head. Choose a black color. And paint something that I can call nose. There are some weird artifacts going on right now. Increase the size. Choose the head. Turn the symmetry back on. And paint the nose. It's looking great. Good to sculpt. Choose the move brush. Increase the radius. Bring the head back front. Mm, yes. And some of this. Draw too. Not too much. I'll switch back to paint. Mm, turn off symmetry. 
Dove? Uh. Là là. Non. Radio small. You can see some weird artifacts going on right now. And I think it's because of the resolution. With the wire frame. Just there are some artifacts you can see over here. So I think I'll give it another round of remesh. The average length of 0 0.15 is earlier. Mirroring turned on for this guy. Oh, so the mirroring is turned on for this. I don't want mirroring for the head. I choose none. There you go, some trouble shooting. Just the skin mode. Back to smooth. Now I can paint them from time. Oh, nice smart. Go back to spot and refine it a little bit more. Smooth things out. Turn off smooth. Do a bit more sculpting. Probably give him some eyebrows too. Do the whole each better. Turn on sentry back. Change the radius. Okay, that's looking. Okay. We can do better. We can do better. Hmm. So, so far we have covered basic navigation, some brush settings, other modes like Sculpt, Paint, Transform, Mirroring, Subdivide, Remesh, some brush settings like Symmetry, and multiple objects handling. I'll use the input. Here and there. Go to the paint. Do you know what I'm saying? Different And there you have it, the basics of Sculptless. I encourage you to play around with this software and have fun with it. Because at the end of the day, having fun is what matters. Oh, by the way, you can choose different brush textures over here. For example, I'll choose um, this one. Increase the brush size. I click select it. So that's how textures work. We can use textures with sculpting too. For example, in the sculpting mode, we use standard. You can see how the brush alpha is affecting it. Affecting the brush. Now we have a rough dog. Somewhat of a representation of it, at least. It looks like a sheep dog to me. In the, in the next video, I'll cover whatever remains for you to learn in this new app. Thanks for watching.